We used to play here all the time. Yeah. All of this will be gone soon. Fatal Frame 2, Crimson Butterfly, is often cited as one of the scariest horror games ever made. And certainly, while playing the game, I agreed with that assessment wholeheartedly. It was released back in 2003 for PS2, before getting an enhanced port for Xbox. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, it still fails to run on the Xbox emulator. It's actually surprising that many people don't know about the remake for Wii. Granted, it's called Project Zero, but it's effectively the same game, albeit with some notable differences. We'll get to those shortly. But first, let's have a look at the PS2 version running on PCSX2. The game has two important patches that you should enable. The first is widescreen. Cinematics will still be 4x3, but in-game will be 16x9. The second is to disable the dither effect, which adds ugly splotches over the graphics. The patch doesn't work for cutscenes, however, but it's better than nothing. So, how is it on the emulator? Well, I certainly do like the anime-inspired character models. There's a lot of detail everywhere and the lighting is surprisingly good. I mean, just look how the flashlight causes shadows to bounce from walls here. When upscaled with higher resolutions, it could easily pass for an early PS3 game. It makes me wonder how good the Xbox version looks, because it apparently had enhanced graphics, but it will be a while before we know. As for gameplay and controls, you effectively use the camera as a weapon against ghosts, and it's surprisingly intuitive. Just press circle to aim and R1 to shoot. That doesn't mean the game is easy, but it's not unapproachable, as some might expect. The first thing you'll notice about the Wii edition is that the camera is behind the playable character, instead of from a fixed perspective on PS2. I have mixed feelings about this because it does make it slightly harder to see lootable items. But on the other hand, this does give the game a more modern feel. You'll also notice that the two protagonists are older in the Wii version. Don't ask me why they made this change, because I don't know. Either way, with this change came better character models, not just for main characters, but also for ghosts and NPCs. I was really impressed with the new animations though, and I thought they were much improved over the PS2 version. Another difference between the two versions is that events sometimes play out in different order. For example, you find the flashlight a bit sooner on the Wii edition, but on PS2 you find the flashlight and camera at the same time. There are two major advantages to playing on Wii. Firstly, it will show you exactly where to go, so there's no confusion. Secondly, it gives visual cues when encountering ghosts. These predict enemy attack angles, and that's a godsend. Combat is harder on Wii, but only because ghosts take longer to defeat. But I played with a standard controller without issue, so take that as a plus. Lastly, there's an additional mode on Wii called Haunted House, where you walk around in first person, but it felt like an afterthought. You can totally skip it because it's not scary at all. So finally, we can have some proper comparisons. Enjoy! I wonder if anyone's here. to look around? Mayu! Mayu! What's wrong? She also became trapped here. She came into this house looking for her boyfriend. And then, where did she go?
All right, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please consider giving a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.